This is the fourth of the six video series on x86 assembly language. In this video and the next, you will learn how the compiler uh, basically uses the condition codes to implement high level logic constructs in x86 assembly language. This is the content that we will be looking at in this video. We will start off with condition codes that are changed as a result of executing instructions, both explicit and implicit settings of these codes. After having a thorough understanding, of the condition codes, we will use it in complex logic implementation. We, we will also examine in detail an example that implements uh, that implements an if else expression using these condition codes. And lastly, we will talk about uh, PC relative and absolute addressing. So what are conditionals and control flow? And as we know that control flow is the order in which the instructions are executed in our uh, programs by, by the processor. These programs uh, written in a high level language implements complex logic uh, like uh, if, else constructs, and do while, while do, and for loops that are all ways in which you can control the order of the control flow of your uh, program. Uh, conditional branches that are based on certain conditions to come out true or false are, are sufficient to implement most of these control flow constructs offered in a high level language so you have the so you have the unconditional branches which executes no matter what regardless uh, of any conditions and are used to implement things like break and continue break just breaks out of the loop and continue goes back to the beginning of the loop those are those are unconditional they happen anyways and we reuse unconditional branches for these kinds of logic in the x86 we refer to branches as jumps because it jumps over a pool of instructions to a different part of your uh, program okay so either conditional or unconditional they are called jumps in 8086 in 8086 architecture uh, we have a very rich variety of jump instructions uh, that start with letter j for jump and x uh, are the various ways of doing jumps based on the conditional codes and here they go for example if you uh, do just jump this means a direct jump that's an unconditional jump so its condition is always true and it's also going to take a as a uh, parameter an address of the location you want to jump to okay you have a lot of variations let's talk about the jump equal jump equal instruction which means that uh, it will jump to the destination instruction address only if the ZF condition register, that is the zero flag uh, is set to one. So now this is a conditional jump that is going to be determined by this uh, special condition code register called ZF. Uh, for example, you do an equality comparison. So you test the condition or compare two values and see if they are equal. And the compare instruction will explicitly set the ZF flag. And what are implicit and explicit setting of condition code? We will get to that shortly. Uh, here is another instruction. We have a jump if less than JL. It's going to jump if less than the evaluation of comparison between two registers happen to be less than the other, a less than compare. Okay. Let's uh, not get bogged down uh, here with the details of uh, many jump variants uh, because it would be much interesting to see a few of these jump instructions in our branching examples uh, however i encourage you all uh, to look at these jumps in reference manuals of x86 on these instructions uh, let's have a brief look at the uh, processor state uh, that give information about the current executing the current executing program so uh, we have the registers that is a very important entity and we have used these already in many examples in our assembly uh, programs the two registers the stack pointer and the base the base pointer are special registers then we uh, we had the instruction pointer that tells us what instruction is going to be executed next and we know all these right from our 
previous uh, videos. So you can imagine when you execute a branch instruction, you are actually changing the value of this register because it might change what instruction is going to be executed next. So a branch instruction could potentially change the value of the instruction point, pointer register. And finally, the condition codes that we have already seen in one of our uh, older videos um, in the uh, playlist on computer organization and assembly language. Condition codes, as the name implies, are used to determine certain conditions, or in other words, in other words, whether or not the jump is going to happen, right? This would be the focus of this video, okay? Uh, let us see how these condition codes are set. So the condition codes may be altered in two ways. The first way is implicit setting, meaning that it just happens implicitly when you carry out some operation using an instruction. Uh, for example, an addition instruction. Uh, performs the arithmetic addition operation. But in extension to that, it also sets some condition codes depending on the results of the operation. Uh, for example, in the edge case, when there is, when there is a carry out from the most significant bit, uh, which essentially is an unsigned overflow. So the CF condition is set, okay? Similarly, if the result happens to equal zero, the zero flag, ZF, uh, gets set to one. And if the result is negative, then the sign bid or the sign flag would get set, uh, means it's a negative number, yeah? And now what happens if we had a, if we had a two's complement overflow, if the number uh, will be larger than what fits in the register, so what is going to happen now? Because the sign bit is getting changed. So you need a way to caution the user to take appropriate measures, okay? Uh, recall the Lial instruction uh, used for computing the effective address. Uh, that could also be used for a variety of other useful arithmetic operations. But be careful of Lial instruction because these condition codes are not set by the Lial instruction. And I repeat, the Lial reaction do not set these condition codes implicitly, okay? The other way to set the condition code is by explicitly using a compare instruction. So for example, uh, if you do compare using the uh, CMPL or CMPQ um, instructions, in which case it compares four byte numbers for the long, uh, for the 32 bit architecture. It takes two source operands, so what it does, it effectively subtracts source two from source one and it computes A minus B. Um, only the difference here is that now destination is not set as it, would, as it would in any addition subtraction instruction. It just computes A minus B and sets uh, the condition codes appropriately. And also notice the order of the source operands. That is uh, source two is the first operand and source one is the second operand. Uh, now the CF is going to be set if, if the carry out from the most significant bit is set, okay? So it's used for unsigned comparison. Uh, the ZF is set if A equals B, or in other words, the result of the compare is zero. And if A is less than B, the overflow flag will be set. And if there is a two's complement sign, a two's complement sign overflow, the overflow flag gets set. So was that cool? Uh, let's see how can we set conditions with the test instruction, okay? It basically takes two source operands as uh, parameters and computes a bitwise AND between these uh, source operands. And similar to the compare instruction, it does not uh, set the destination that is given as source one. Uh, in programming, we usually encounter bitwise operations uh, with a mask. Uh, so one of the source operand could also be a mask, okay? Zero flag will be set if the result of A and B is equal to zero. Similarly, the sign flag will be set if the bitwise and operation of A and B is less than zero. And you want to test uh, for that condition, okay? 
is less than zero. The test instruction sets SF and ZF uh, flag based on the result. Uh, then, then we have the set instruction that is useful when you have conditions like uh, we have a less than zero and you want to test for that condition, okay? So using a test uh, instruction, we can uh, read condition codes after the compare instruction and can set a single byte to zero or one. So you can actually read and do computation with the contents of, of the condition uh, code register. Let's understand this uh, using a simple example that uses the set conditions to read condition code, okay? And here we have a function called uh, greater than GT that just takes X and Y as two uh, parameters and returns X is greater than Y. And we know the location of, and we know the location of uh, X and Y, right? And here's the body of assembly code. And what the first instruction is, is doing, is doing here is that it is getting Y and storing it in EX. Then we, then we are comparing Y with X uh, and because X is stored in uh, is stored eight locations away from EBP, that is why we are adding an offset of eight to the EBP, okay? In case you forgot. Uh, and now we are doing set greater, which sets if the result of the comparison indeed turns out to be greater, okay? Um, AL um, is our byte addressable version of the 32-bit registers. And uh, we know that we have registers that are byte addressable. And the instruction uh, is just going to set the lower byte of EAX and does not alter the remaining three bytes. Okay. Then the set G is true if X greater than Y. And just setting the condition codes and AL now is going to be set to one if X is greater than Y, um, it can be set to zero otherwise, okay? And finally, we need uh, a move ZBL to simply put zeros in the rest of EAX to set the register to one as the three bytes of EAX are still not changed and ne needed to be padded with zero. So we have learned about how the set condition codes explicitly, uh, how to set condition codes explicit, explicitly by using the compare instruction. Now let's go into learning uh, how to use branch instructions that use these condition codes for implementing many complex logic that modify the control flow of our uh, programs, such as the if else constructs and the different kinds of loops that we know from our programming classes. Let's consider the, this example that implements a simple conditional branch. This is the code for it uh, that implements the absolute, absolute difference uh, with X and Y as its two uh, parameters. And then uh, returns uh, the absolute difference between them. And the way uh, we do that is by first comparing uh, whether X is greater than Y. And we know that this is done through subtracting Y from uh, X. If X is uh, greater, it performs X minus Y because X is greater. And else it performs Y minus X in case Y is greater than or equal to X. And this is, uh, it's IA32 assembly implementation of the C code. The first thing that you would notice is that we have, we have two bodies. And in both of the bodies, we are using jumps. In body one, we are using a conditional jump, the jump less than or equal to, to label seven, uh, labels uh, to label seven. Label simply uh, specifies a location in your code where the jumps are going to jump to. These are just locations in the memory given the name labeled in the world of mnemonics for human readability, okay? Uh, whereas in the body two, we are using an unconditional jump uh, or a direct jump to uh, label eight, L8. If the condition evaluates to true in the compare instruction here, that is if the compare instruction does lead to less than or equal to, 
it would change the control flow of the program execution. So essentially, uh, what happens is uh, what, what happens in reality is that the value of the EIP register, the value there changes to the location in memory that is labeled L7. Okay, so now it is going to execute body two until it hits the jump instruction that takes the instruction pointer to the location L8. That is the finished part of the program to return from the function call. Okay, uh, just to just to remind you guys, the leave instruction is a substitute for uh, what we saw in earlier examples that is exactly equal to these two instructions, where pop is used to return the address of the old e EPP from where the function was called to resume from there. Uh, the mapping of this code directly to this assembly implementation might be hard for some to understand, right? But the next couple of slides uh, will but the next couple of slides will demystify this apparently uh, comp this apparent complexity of this implementation and we will exactly learn how these branches are actually implemented this is uh, basically the go to version of our absolute function on the left where you can notice some go to expressions that makes it easy to understand the translation process from c to assembly this is basically exactly what we saw in the assembly implementation in the previous slide, okay? Uh, though C allows uh, the use of go-tos. However, that is uh, not recommended and is generally considered to be bad coding style. Uh, what we are doing here uh, is just to make, clear, uh, to make it clear how the translation happens. So, uh, so let's see this animation of what we already discussed. As usual, uh, the first two instructions are loading the uh, parameters X and Y in EDX and EAX respectively, okay? Now note here the expression in the go-to version of our code. Since it is uh, jumping to the else part of the code, the comparison has changed from X greater than Y to X less than or equal to Y because this is determining whether we should jump to the else part of the code. And if so, we run the else part of the code. And when we hit the direct jump uh, in, in instruction, it jumps back to the exit label eight, okay? Uh, however, if the jump does not happen, we are actually executing the then part of the code. So basically we are performing EDX equals EDX minus EAX, right? That essentially is doing X minus Y. And then it gets the results and stores in the EAX. The reason we store into EAX uh, is because that's where we put return values for the function that uh, we can actually, that, that we actually return to after we finish, right? Uh, now, the next step here is to implement the else part of our code, which will get executed if the else part of our code runs, right? Uh, that is, if x is less than y, and that's going to implement y minus x, and uh, we use another sub subtract instruction here, except that now uh, see that the uh, parameters are reversed as compared to the then part of the code. Now what we are doing here is eax uh, is equal to eax minus edx, which essentially is y minus x, right? And we don't need move. Uh, and we don't need to move the result of this evaluation as we did in the then uh, in the then block. And finally, when we hit the direct jump instruction, uh, then from there we just jump to label eight, where uh, we know what does leave do, and we return. I hope it was easy to implement this code uh, in assembly from the go to version of the C code, right? So this is how the conditional expression translation is generally performed. We have this conditional expression in general uh, that, uh, that is its equivalent of what we just saw, uh, the result of which would evaluate to something like this. So now the translation process has become very simple. We just have to put, uh, uh, we just have to put to test a conditional expression, which can be any condition and if this and if this test evaluates to true, we are going to return the then expression. 
Otherwise, we are going to return the else expression. This is uh, the equivalent. This is the equivalent uh, go to version, and we have seen this in this regard and implementation of a code that evaluates the expression x greater than y. And if uh, so, we return x minus y. Otherwise, uh, we return y minus x. And the thing to observe here, and the thing to observe uh, here is that the go to version actually evaluates the opposite as can be seen from the previous example. Now the question uh, might arise, can we implement this simple conditional expression using a simpler and more efficient branching instead of the complex flow of multiple branches that we saw in the earlier example? Because using multiple branches seem not to be very efficient because branches tend to be expensive. Well, the x86-64 supports a special type of instruction that is more efficient uh, implementation of the code we saw. This, this operation is the conditional uh, move instruction. So what conditional move uh, does is that it moves a value from the source register to the destination register only if a certain condition is met. And this condition is the same one that we uh, uh, used for jumps. So that means we can rewrite this code here in a way that we perform the comparison and depending on the result of comparison, we do a move. Okay, so we say we do move uh, less than, so we say we do move uh, less than or equal to, so essentially uh, we only move the value from EDX to EAX if the condition is satisfied. Uh, so, we can, so we can implement exactly, uh, we just saw in the previous slide, but without uh, any branches. So, so we do the two subtractions here. We subtract y from x, and the second one sub, sub, subtracts um, x from y. Uh, then we store them, uh, store them in eax and edx respectively. Like before, we compare the values, and based on that, we only move edx to eax if the condition gets set, and then we just. And then we just return because, because we should put a return value in, in EAX, right? And that's, it. and that's it. Isn't that cool? So why is this good? Uh, here essentially, uh, here essentially uh, it is an efficient implementation because it, it is without using expensive branch instructions. So this, is, this can be a huge performance increase. Uh, but there is a cost to it, okay? There is one cost to it. There is a, one drawback that requires us to evaluate expressions in both the branches. So one last thing that is important to understand here is how addressing actually happens. Meaning how is addressing, how is addressing actually done in branches? And often the destination is specified in a PC relative way, it means that the instruction specifies an offset where we want to jump relative to the address of the current instruction. For example, say this is our memory location 102 in hexadecimal, where we have this instruction JE, jump if equal. The result uh, a jump if the result of compare evaluation indicates an equal. And, and we have the offset to where we want to jump to, okay? And the instruction jumps to 172 hexadecimal. But note that the destination here specifies 172 hexadecimal. That is computed using address of the current instruction plus the offset, uh, which is uh, 70. Hex. This is uh, what is called PC relative addressing. And what significance does it has? Actually, this is so important because uh, now we can relocate, uh, uh, now we can reallocate this block and it can just change to any location as long as that is relative to the PC, okay? This is very uh, crucial because the operating system needs this flexibility as it runs multiple uh, processes. 
uh, this gives it great flexibility because PC relative addressing blocks can be loaded anywhere in memory without the need to uh, adjust any addresses. But note that some branches have absolute addresses as well. In that case, they are not relocatable. Uh, that is it uh, for this session. This was the fourth video on understanding x86 assembly language. And in the next video, we will try to understand how our high level loop constructs translated from C to uh, x86 assembly language.